towering high above everything around them and home to the highest country on earth, the magnificent Drakensberg Mountains rise up out of the ground. The name should tell you enough. Drakensberg translates to Mountains of the Dragons and the Zulu name Ukashlamba or Barrier of Spears provides another graphic and fitting description. Situated within South Africa, the Drakensberg stretches across the country dividing the low-lying Osa and Zulu homelands from the high altitude free state and at the center of it all the mountain kingdom of Lesotho, the country that boasts the highest low point of any country on earth and home to the Basutu people. In this series we are taking a grand tour of the Drakensberg starting in my hometown of Port Elizabeth right at sea level and climbing up to around 3000 meters as we make our way around the entire Drakensberg range over the space of a week passing through the East Cape Highlands, Drakensberg Gardens, Giant's Castle, Cathedral Peak, the Amphitheatre with the Sentinel and the 983 metre Tugela Falls, the Golden Gate Highlands and then heading home on the northern side with a stop at the Grip Dam which is fed by the many mountain streams in Lesotho. We've done plenty of mountain passes on this channel in the past but this time we're taking it to a whole new level aiming to conquer all of South Africa's highest mountain passes for a total elevation gain and loss of over 45 kilometers. Yes, you heard that right, 45,000 meters or 150,000 feet. Not fun on the pocket with these diesel prices at the moment, but worth every cent. Day one will be our longest driving day with almost 700 kilometers of roads to cover. It may not sound like much, but we gaining 11,500 meters along the way, and most of these roads will not be easy going. Expecting around 10 to 12 hours of driving, we get a 4 a.m. start, and as the sun starts to rise, we are met with many beautiful sights. This will be the most diverse day of all as we start at sea level and slowly climb higher and higher, and the first mountain range that we pass is the Amatola Range. These peaks are a little bit under 2 kilometers high, much smaller than the bigger Drakensberg, but what makes these so interesting is that they catch all the rain off the coast and create pockets of Afromontane rainforests that you really wouldn't expect to find in this part of Africa, with giant yellowwood trees, waterfalls and plenty of life. The Nicomalan Pass takes us up to the top of the Amatola Mountains where we find ourselves on a plateau in a completely different world with dry grassland, frosted over and thick clouds of fog shading us from the rising sun. One of the things I love most about the Eastern Cape of South Africa is that it offers so much ecological diversity with so many different biomes in such a small area and today's drive will really showcase the very best of it. As we head northeast and enter the Trans Sky, which is the home of the Corsa people, we see even stranger things. Have you ever seen so many spider webs before? I certainly haven't. This is an arachnophobe's nightmare. The Trans Sky is home to some really beautiful scenes, but is also notorious for very bad and dangerous roads. Passing through the many small towns can also take time but it's all worth it in the end. Further inland we drive and finally get our first view of the Drakensberg Mountains, which we'll be throwing ourselves into over the next few hours. So we're uh, just about to come to the town of Elliot. Um, we're probably an hour, at, or hour or two away from uh, getting close to, to roads. And we've just spotted the Drakensberg Mountains behind us. Now we're only at about 1,500 meters elevation and we're going to 3,000 meters elevation. So we're only halfway there in terms of altitude. Um, so the next couple of hours are going to be pretty steep and, and uh, technical. And soon we'll be airing down to, to get on the, on the gravel road. So the real fun begins now. At the town of Elliot, we come face to face with the characteristic grassy slopes and huge rock faces of the East Cape Highlands and prepare to tackle our first big mountain pass of the day, the Barclay Pass, which climbs up to a little over 2,000 meters 
and features a smooth drive up a tar road, although this road is notorious for closures in the winter when it snows here. And this is where the true adventure begins, as we officially enter the East Cape Highlands and take a right turn onto your gravel road. We'll be airing down and won't be back on the blacktop until around lunchtime the following day. Tonight we'll be staying near the quaint town of Rhodes, but first we need to tackle three of the top five highest passes in the country, which all lie in this area. Lundin's Neck Pass, Volunteer's Hook Pass and Carlisle's Hook Spread Pass. Unsure of the condition of these mountain pass roads, I put my foot down in an attempt to cover as much ground on the good roads as possible. around Rhodes has a very rich Scottish heritage with many of the farm names and family names sounding very Scottish. With the brown and orange hillsides and the mountain streams and the chilly temperatures you could very easily mistake this for the Scottish Highlands. When we reach the Bell River and cross over an old steel bridge, we arrive at a crossroads. From here, we head north on a rapidly deteriorating gravel road that will take us up to Lundin's Neck Pass and all the way to the Lesotho border as we climb higher and higher still. Okay, well, we're in a bit of a rush to, to do all these, all these routes and passes, but I just had to stop here and get out and just soak in all these views because it's truly spectacular it doesn't look like Africa at all um, the altitude obviously just makes it much colder up here so it really does look like Scottish Highlands and we've got this sort of horseshoe bend with this river snaking down here um, just so beautiful I mean that is just hard to beat but we're on a hurry so London's neck pass is coming up and I'm very curious to see how that turns out We edge closer to some of the higher peaks in the area and it's funny how these mountains sort of just sneak up on you. We've been gaining altitude this whole time and before we know it we are right amongst the dramatic landscapes of the Drakensberg and right at Lundin's Neck. Well here we are at uh, Lundin's Neck Pass. I think we're actually quite close to the top. It's been quite a, a gradual slope. I think on the other side going down into the valley closer to the Lesotho border there's a few switchbacks. But it's one of them that I wanted to tick off. As you can see, it's part of South Africa's High Five. That's the five highest passes uh, in the country. And also part of the Ben 10 Eco Challenge, which is sort of like a, not a race, but it's, a, it's, a, it's just something that people do to support all the, the accommodation options and farmers in the area, where you, you do all 10 of these, these mountain passes and these roads. Um, and obviously it just helps the the tourism in the area so it's really nice to come out here and do some of these we're not going to get to do all 10 but we're going to do a whole lot of south africa's high five uh, over the next few days so let's go do it and hopefully it's fun as we begin to descend down the northern side of the pass we get a breathtaking view of all the mountain peaks of lesotho lesotho has been called the kingdom in the sky and you can see why 
Lesotho has a low point of over 1,400 meters, which makes it the highest low point of any place on earth, and with basically no flat points, the inhabitants have had to adapt to living in the mountains. When you think of Africa, you don't think of tribes of people living in the snow, but that is life for the inhabitants here, and they've learned to thrive. The road on the way down was pretty rough and we had to be careful to keep our speed down. We come across our first Basutu people, tending to some donkeys on the hillside and continue down. Sutu huts are typically round with thatch roofs. We call these round huts rondavals. This is probably the chief's house as it's a bit nicer than the rest in the area. And as we pass through the very small community of Senku, we finally reach what we were looking for, the river marking the border between South Africa and Lesotho. So we've made it to the bottom of the pass. We've got South Africa on this side. And we've got the mountain kingdom of Lesotho on that side uh, with this river as the border. We're not going to spend a lot of time here because we're going to be crossing into Lesotho in two days time. So we'll get to what Lesotho is and everything then. But just thought we'd appreciate these amazing views and this beautiful blue mountain river. We spent about five minutes just taking a breather and enjoying the views. But soon we have to head back up. When the road splits up once again and we take the road heading east, we pass through the community of War Trail, with colourful trees lining the valley and providing shade and shelter to the small farmhouses along the road. These small farms have so much history and, as mentioned earlier, many of the inhabitants have a rich Scottish heritage. Here at Bidstone, you can stay in a quaint stone cottage surrounded by these beautiful trees, but we are just passing through as we prepare to tackle the Volunteers Hook Pass, far higher and more challenging than the one we had just completed.
Well, we're on our way up towards Tiffendale, and this is the highest pass we're going to do today. Um, at the top of Tiffendale, it gets to about 3,000 meters or just above that. And um, I'm not 100% sure whether the last section to the top of the mountain will be open, but this section looks open and it looks like it's been traveled relatively recently, so the road should be okay. But yeah, by far the roughest road we've had to do so far, and it's going to be slow going, so hopefully we don't, have, don't run out of sunlight. At the top of the pass, the road levels off once again at around 2,800 meters and we hit the gas again with time running out. One of the places we really wanted to stop at was the Tiffendel Ski Resort. Nestled at the foot of Ben McDewey, the highest mountain in the Eastern Cape at a little over 3,000 meters. There's a road snaking up to the top of the ski slope which holds the title of the highest pass in South Africa but sadly the resort was closed and we found ourselves at a locked gate. Well we tried and um, it looks like the resort is closed. I'm not sure if that's a COVID thing. I, do, I, I would think it's not. Um, it's probably just because there's not enough snow yet. I think they probably only open up sort of June, July when the snow really starts coming and this kind of get sticky enough to actually ski because I'm guessing it's just too far out of the way to come up if you're not going to ski so yeah we missed it unfortunately uh, we can only get to the kind of 2700 meter mark it would have been nice to get up to over 3000 but hey when we go up Sani Pass in two days time we'll get up over 3000 and we'll be staying up above 3000 meters in Lesotho which will be amazing and nice and cold but yeah one day maybe <laughs> We had one more pass to tackle on our way down to camp, the Carlisle's Hookspreit Pass. This is the main road up to the ski resort and it is in relatively good condition, but I tell you what, when it's snowing here, that's a whole different story. We have about an hour of sunlight left when we reach the bottom of the pass, so we decide to pop in at the quaint little town of Rhodes. Settled around 1860 by farmers who originally lived in caves and named after the Prime Minister at the time, Cecil John Rhodes. This town is one of my all-time favourite places to visit. It has so much character, especially in autumn and winter. It's a very popular place for trout fishing, 
high altitude training and winter sports and is full of quirky accommodation options including Walkabouts Inn which has a legendary little pub inside. The owner, Dave Walker, has many stories to tell about the town and its history and can explain all the strange and wonderful pictures and items that cover the walls. But with light running out, we make our way out of Rhodes and down the Bell River to our camp spot under a willow tree at Alpine Swift. Well, we've arrived at our campsite for tonight in the nick of time because it's just starting to get dark. Uh, the place we're staying at tonight is called Alpine Swift. It's just outside the town of Rhodes. And this is an amazing little camp spot. We're right along the Bell River, which is kind of the main river that runs through here. Uh, clear water flowing nicely. And the campsite they've got, if you follow me here, is actually an old willow tree that's kind of collapsed. And there's a little brass spot and a bin and everything. So it's exactly what we need. And I think we're going to sleep very well tonight um, but I think we should get the fire started as soon as possible just so we're not up too late tonight and I'll probably send the drone up as well because this place is beautiful the temperature is dropping rapidly we get the fire going make some hot chocolate and prepare to wind down for the night If we were looking for a sign that we were at a pretty high altitude, here it is. Chip packets are all puffed up and inflated from obviously the thinner air. Uh, I'm also a little bit puffed up with my thick jacket. It's going to be chilly tonight and um, we're expecting it to drop below zero. Thankfully we're not here in the middle of winter. Um, it can drop like 10 degrees below zero, sometimes more. Um, but yeah, with the electric blanket and the down duvet and all of that hot chocolate before bed we should be okay thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this episode and make sure to subscribe because the days to follow are going to be absolutely epic